Hello everybody, I'm Ard, and welcome to another episode of Minecraft Enigmatica 2 Expert. This week, I will not be attacking a dragon. I swear, I learned my lesson. And I probably should get moving forward and actually make the water wheels that I had planned on making two episodes back. But first, we're going to go make the compact machines to actually store the water wheels in, as well as maybe automate a farm. Let's show you how the compact machines actually work, eh? So the compact machine mod, it starts with this personal shrinking device right here, which once you have ender pearls, is actually pretty easy to make. And if you just right click this, it brings up the general instructions, which are not all that complicated. It just shows you generally how the machines work, and then how to make them, and then how the tunnels in and out of them work to transferring power and items. The instructions are unfortunately not all that amazing, at least in 1.12 in this version with it, um, and, but it's not too hard to riddle out how to go do it. So, to make the actual uh, miniaturization machines, you just need to basically take one of these personal shrinking devices, some diamonds, an eye of ender, which none of this has changed, and just do that. It does not actually consume the personal shrinking device, so you'll have, still have it left over because you'll need it to actually access the compact machines when you're done. So let's go wander over to where I already prepared the area and already set up the miniaturization machines just to show you um, how it all works. And, oh, and by the way, I did some enchanting while I was uh, in between episodes. And one of the things I got was multi-jump two on my boots, which is what I was mentioning as a, a form of flight that I actually refer. So let's show you how that works while I'm, we're on way over. See, so I fall, I slow fall, and you can just keep jumping up into the air. And back here, you see where I had the miniaturization machines set up. So to set up the miniaturization machines, they have to be three back from whatever size square box you want to make. The largest recipe boxes are five by five, so this is the largest setup you actually need, at least in Enigmatica, to make these. Um, they have to be two up off the ground, because they have to be pointed at the center of the box that you want to make. And you do not actually need a smaller setup for this at all. You can always just go straight to the largest setup. So to start making these, you we should look at the recipe for the largest one, because this is what we're going to do, because emeralds are actually pretty easy to get. You just need a lot of these compact wall machines. You put them in a box with an open space with whatever block is the special one designated the size in here, and then you throw an ender pearl in. The first thing you do is mean to make these compact machine walls. And those are pretty easy, because it's just a block of iron with a redstone on it in the center of this, and you just toss another redstone in, and you get 16 of them. So to show you how that works, we'll just put that on the glowstone I have there, toss that in here, step outside of the field, and chuck in the redstone. And you see how it's shrinking, and there goes the blocks. So let me repeat this a few times, because we actually need a ton of these. I need to make seven batches of them, and I'll get back to you in a second. So the other thing we need to make while we're doing this are tunnels to be able to pipe things in and out of the compact machine. So we just need eight redstone in a circle around it a compact machine wall and a hopper and then you just chuck another redstone in and we have our pieces it's actually pretty easy so let's just do that real fast so now that's all that's left to do is to build a big giant cube so and then make it hollow in the center and throw an emerald in the very center suspended in air like it's magic so let me build this real fast and then we will uh, shrink it Okay, and now that we've got this done, all we do is throw an ender pearl into it, and then this shrinks. Although it takes a little bit longer. And there we have our first comic machine. I'm going to go back inside the base real fast. Wait a second, before I go do that, I realized there's something I didn't show you about setting these things up. So let me go, let me go smash one of these real fast. Okay, so let's go over to this one over here. Let's go up here, and we just right-click this, and this will say that there's a field missing. There's a field projector missing, and it will show you the green arrows where you can place it. And like I said, they can be a much larger range than you ever actually need, but it shows you right where you want to place it. Um, so when you set up your first one, it will then tell you generally where to put it up on the sides as well. And then you also have to clear out any other, um, any other things like grass or flowers, or even sand blocks. It doesn't like sand being down here. And you also have to clear out everything like snow and grass and flowers from this general area. It needs it to be flat with no other entities at all in here. So there's that problem. 
So anyhow, now I'm going to go inside and pop the box up and show you. Okay, so let's go place this over here in the wall where I was going to put the power pipes and I put one too many here and just slap it in there. So right now the power is not actually connected to it because there's nothing pointing into it. But if you then right click the personal shrinking device on it, it teleports you inside the compact machine. You can click on any of these walls to get right back out. Um, but let's show you how the tunnel works in theory so far. So I want it to be able to pipe out to the north wall. Uh, it doesn't really matter which side you connect this to. So let's just come over here for now. Let's put it in the floor down here. And it's exporting out the bottom right now. So this is going to go out the bottom. If we right click it again, it switches so it's up and north, which is where the power is. And you saw it now has power in the thing, so it's coming in. So there's now power coming into this. And let's go to the other side and let's make this the output. I'm going to output this to the bottom. So now that we have these set up, we can actually go look into making a farm. And now that all this stuff is actually properly set up. So let's just use the device to go back outside. And you can see now that the tunnel is set up, the actual, the uh, flux duct is now properly connecting up into this. That's one of the ways you can know that the, the tunnel is working properly is if the pipes actually properly hook up to it. All right, so our next step is to rip up this whole farm, take it out here and put it inside the, the box. And to justify doing that, we need to make a couple devices. And there's a couple of relatively low hanging ones that facilitate farming and tree farms and whatnot at a relatively early step. They're not the most efficient, they're not the fastest, but anything is better than manually coming out here and harvesting this stuff and storing it all myself just over and over and over. The things that we're looking to make are the harvester from Cyclic, which just picks up all the items and just dumps them on the ground, but it will replant your seeds. It basically works exactly the same as the, the harvesting site that I showed you a couple episodes back. And it's pretty easy to make. It's just obsidian, nether quartz, emerald, dispenser, and, well, this is the not so easy part, an advanced machine casing, which we haven't done from industrial craft yet. We can easily do this now that we can actually make steel because it's steel plates. Um, carbon plates, which I showed you, are the things where you grind up where you grind up some coal and then you basically toss it in the compressor and it makes the plates. And then advanced alley, which we have not made previously, which requires a mixed metal ingot, which just requires a bunch of iron, bronze, and tin plates. Not too hard to make, just time consuming at this point. So I already made the box, so we can go ahead and make this shortly. Uh, the other thing we want to make, because all this does is drop the items on the ground, is the item collector, which doesn't even require power, just sucks up everything in an area around it. I've already made that because of, it is relatively so simple, so let me put it on the ground and show you generally how it works right now. So you put it down the direction facing away from you, let's pop it on the ground, you can see that it's already working, it doesn't require power, and you can see... You can set what sort of area you want and you can show it show you the area that it affects. So we can increase this to 11, 11, 13, higher and higher and higher, however big we want it to be. And it just sucks up items as they get, yep, there you go. And then you see that it pulled the item straight in just, just immediately. And then we can pipe those out into the wall that we, the tunnel that we made in the box and dump those into chest boxes or drawers or something. So that's that's actually obscenely powerful for as early in the game as we can make that and as easily as we can make those right now. So let's go actually make the uh, harvester and then go tear up the farm. All right, so as you can see, I hooked it up to a small storage crate and I actually got started on the build. I tossed, I ripped out the one outside and you can see that it's outputting some crops already into here. So let me show you something real fast. We can right click on it and it can actually show you what's been built inside. Sometimes things don't always show up right. Sometimes there's some rendering issues. Sometimes it shows you things that aren't actually there, but it can give you a general idea. And one of the reasons we're doing this at all is to so that we don't have to deal with the crops actually ticking and animating live outside and that we can just all interface with this in a tiny little box and save space. So we come inside here and you can see that I've got a couple other plots that are set up to be built out eventually, but I have a main plot set up right here with uh, basic setting sort of crops like wheat and flax and some uh, beetroot over there to trade to, to my uh, 
villagers and with sprinklers and with the apiaries in here. So it's a very basic setup and then fertile soil to put up the sugar cane to get that started as well. So I did goof a little bit when I set this up and you notice that I've got the item duck coming out of the harvester. I didn't actually need the item collector that I built because I forgot that this had an internal inventory. You'll notice however that this is the power bar and it's empty. This is a major power suck. Our, the windmill we built cannot actually keep up with this. So I think the next step we need to actually do is to go build the water wheels. You notice that I've also got it set to 15 by 15. We show the area, it's basically the whole box. So I can have this one harvester do all of this. But if we really wanted to, we could build more and we could actually scale up this wall and do multiple layers. I also should probably like remove part of this and put some end stone in or maybe put it in the center there so I can build some, have it grow some ender pearls uh, passively as well. But let's go build the water wheels because we really, really need some more power because this is just not cutting it right now. All right, so before we get on the water mills, I realized I never actually went through the things I upgraded during the uh, tree between episodes. So one of the things I did was I actually set up the enchanting table and I put it right next to the experience tank because I figured that's a good spot for it. And you notice that there are these blocks behind it instead of a row of books. And what these blocks are, are the magical wood from Extra Utils 2 that are basically two and a half times a bookshelf. So you only need six of them to get full power of your enchanting table. I'll probably move this upstairs or somewhere else later, but for now I'm just leaving it down here because this is primarily where I'm working. Um, but that was just one of the things I decided to go get done just so I could start enchanting stuff. Also, since we had to wait for beets so I could get emeralds and a few other things, well, you notice that I now have a storage problem. This is now super stuff full of everything. Um, and that's fine. Uh, next episode, I'm probably going to go through and show you um, how I'm going to turn this into a power positive layout instead of a power negative one. But let's pop this open real fast and I'll show you what I did just so you know how I'm dealing with the overflow instead of stopping up the machine on the inside. So you'll notice down here there's a trash can. And you'll notice that this duct looks a little bit different from this duct. And that's because this one is a variant of the item duct called a dense item duct, which increases path length dramatically, which if memory serves, basically makes this so this acts like it's a thousand lengths of pipe away from the one before it, so that it will never go into this pipe if there's room to go into this one for the given item. So it'll only chuck the overflow down here, so we're not going to lose the extra ender pearls coming out of the tank or the ender lilies or not for now. Most of these others are full up and those are just shunting down into here now, but it's at least not gumming up the machine for now. So that's how that generally works. And there's also another one called the vacuum item duct that basically does the same thing. It basically shrinks the length dramatically. So it acts like it's much, much closer. So those are useful for doing uh, layouts. So while we step outside to go take a look at one other thing that changed, one of the things I've been meaning to show you guys and just keep forgetting was the digging backpack which is similar to the dank and all in nature but is a lot cheaper to make at least the base version of it. And what it does is any dirt or sand or stone or snow or any of the other base materials that you pick up just automatically get shunted into its backpack. And if you right click this on a chest, it will dump the contents into the chest. And if you shift right click it, it will lock it so when you dig, it doesn't go in the backpack. And if you go to the green, it will automatically resupply any blocks that are in your hot bar. And if it's yellow and you shift right click, if you right click on a chest, it will pull items from the chest into the backpack. And now the reason some of these things don't sound so useful because it's like, why would I need more dirt or stone in most cases? But it's because there's actually a whole bunch of variants, like the apiarist one that lets you do bees, um, the mining one which does ores, the forestry one that does wood. There's a whole bunch of variants on it that are all very specific to what they can pick up and use. So there's a whole lot of options and they're relatively cheap to make. It mostly only takes wool to make these, at least at the base level. Um, wool and iron, or no, not even wool, string and iron, at least in this one. I think it might be harder than others. I can't remember for sure. But there's an upgraded one that requires stuff from bees, which is a bit harder to make, and then a carpenter. So not hard to do, but time consuming. Now we'll come up here and we'll flip around and you can see that the windmill looks a bit different. And it's because I put sails on it to make it give it more to have it give it more power to the to the base. This Hey zombie, how are you? What are you doing down there? I don't want to be your friend, please stop hitting me. Wow, this guy is super buff.
Okay, so now that I'm not being attacked, uh, the sails are, once we have a farm, aren't too hard to make because what they take is a whole bunch of tough fabric, which is a whole bunch of industrial hemp fiber. And I planted a large amount of it inside the uh, my little farm box. So we've been able to make those now. Oh, and hey, look, he gave me some armor. That's pretty nice of him. Sure is a good thing I built that Meg Manville so I can repair the armor that he just dropped for me, eh? Alright, so I got enough emeralds to make another compact machine box to build the water mills in. And I already made the water wheels, which aren't too hard. They're just four of these surrounded by a stinglet. And these segments are just made of a bunch of treated wood, which I have been making a ton of because I've been having to eat up the creosote to keep these two furnaces going. I'm eventually going to make a generator that consumes that, but I'm not there yet. Um, so I think we're about ready to go. So let's pop the box down and let's go inside. So the first thing I'm going to do when I come in here is I'm going to go back into this corner right here and I'm going to shift right click to set the entry point because I'm going to build up a lot of the space with the water wheels. So to give you a base idea how this is going to be laid out, let me grab my blocks. I'm going to use these anti-blocks so I think they look good as well as these glass panes and we need the kinetic dynamos. So we're going to do this, we're going to do three per neat three water wheels per each so we're going to make this five wide three four five and then these need to be nine long so one two three four five six seven eight nine okay so this is the general enclosure the water wheel is going to be in the connect dynamo needs to be in the very middle so and the f yeah this one and then it needs to be at the fourth high block so we put it up here like that Climb up here, and then we'll grab the kinetic dynamo, which we already have, as I already set this up. And then we're going to drop it, we're going to fall off, which is not what we want. I'm on the wrong side anyways. And what we're going to do is we're going to jump up, with my slow fall kick in too late, come down here, and put it like that. So, I made a mistake and didn't show this to you when I made the windmill, but you want the kinetic dynamo to be facing this way with the big huge circle on it. As a side, you connect the water wheels and or the windmills to You'll notice the other side is different. This is where we'll draw the power out of it. So let's slap the water wheels in here so you can see what this looks like. Like that. And you can just go up to three deep on these. And let's see. I'm going to close this off just for aesthetics. I could just place these straight up against the wall, but I prefer the look of actually having blocks there personally. Um, that's just me being weird. All right, so now that we have this, let's go finish the build. Okay, and assuming I've got everything set up, when I add water to this, we should start getting power out of this. So I use these white anti-blocks just because I like the way they look. They look kind of lit up and they keep that nice style of lines there. I use these glass panes just because I like to be able to see the water wheels move. Um, and then we're just using a single battery to test if the power is coming out properly. So I guess let's head up to the top and place the first couple ones to make sure that this is even working right. And it looks like we have power coming out of this water wheel. So there are 
Oh, and I didn't block this off properly, so I'm going to go take the water out. But there are ways to optimize this to make it go faster. You can add more and more water in here. There are actually alternate fluids you can have that will help push this up because they have vertical lift instead of falling. Um, but I don't have access to those yet, so we'll start with what we have. The power from the water wheels is already boosted in Enigmatica pretty significantly as it is, so having these in here plus another one over behind me should be generating quite a bit of power for quite a while. So let me go fix the water. Alright, so I mostly fixed the water. It's not a completely perfect layout. I'll link a video that shows how it can be done. Um, like there should be like one more up here and I didn't bother doing it because this actually generates quite a bit of power in this pack Like I said, it's filling up the battery fairly decently um, It'll obviously do it twice as fast when I have a second one over there, but you can see that I have the water cascading down from the top It hits a block here and kind of rolls down here, which helps speed this up There's another bl two block thing here that the water is actually pushing from right to left Which helps roll this up here and there was supposed to be another one that did something similar up there But I didn't bother doing it um the layout's a little weird. So this is how you do the water wheels though. So now we have some more power. I just need to go build the other one now and start piping this out instead of into a battery. So give me a bit. Okay, so now you can see that I removed the battery and pushed the power cables all the way to the wall of the compact machine. I also replaced the power cables with hardened flux ducts, which are the next stage up from the normal leadstone flux ducts. You upgrade them with Invar to do this. They move more power faster through these, so that it will help with the increased capacity that we currently have and any others that we add later. Coming back outside, you can see I have it sitting on top of a battery, the same one that was inside it before. The battery had been drained by the contact machine earlier, so you can now see that we're at a net positive. Um, it's automatically outputting directly into the battery, which is good. We don't need a power duct to, to do it because it already outputs out the, the bottom side. And then we've got it outputting to the south side right here. You can click the various sides that you want it to put power out to and you can see that it's full and you can see I updated the hardened flux ducts all the way around to the preheaters I said I wasn't going to use but they're now hooked up and properly powered and if we come back here and we go into the farm you can see that the harvester right here is full of power so we're now at a net positive by a significant amount that said, we should still try to make the farm itself a net positive, and it's actually a power generator instead of a power negative, by putting in something called culinary generators from Extra Utils, uh, which we will basically make food, put it into those, have them generate enough power to self-propagate this, as well as putting power out instead of sucking power in. So hopefully we'll do that maybe in the next episode, and also sort out the inventory control problem we now have due to this farm. But again, next episode probably. Okay, folks, I think I'm going to call it here for today. We made our first real spot of progress for actual automation as well as significantly increasing our power supply and just getting the ball rolling to just mass production of goods. So, as always, I'm Ard, and have a good day.